everybody, this is Rashi Bari from Columbia University, the host of Daily Physics. Today, episode 8. Today, our topic is time dilation. To help us understand this topic, we invited two students, one from Brown University. Welcome, Raf. Hello, folks. This is Raf, Brown University physics grad student. We also invited um, Shubhana Isaac Bari from NYU. Welcome, Shubhana. Hi, everyone. Oh, my God. Oh my god, that's such a big failure on the it screen, is, man! Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to hear me oh. like that! Turn NYU. off the camera! I understand why NYU is scared of the Brown University, is I like... Oh, man. Um, okay. Oh, no, I'm very scared of failures. Sorry. Okay, so today our topic is time dilation. This is a continuation from yesterday. Yesterday we did the principle of relativity, meaning that if the velocity is constant, then what happened? There is no way to do any experiment that tells you who is moving. There is no absolute answer to the question, is something moving? Now, today we're going to do time dilation. We're going to try to help you understand, just like every day, in a way that... You know, even the baby born today understand it. Uh, if we fail, let us know in the comment box below. Yeah, just, just like Raph. Raph understands understand it, a baby born yesterday. Okay, so, the, it. so the time dilation is when things are at rest, then uh, the clock moves, you know, as usual. But when things move faster and faster and faster, close to the speed of light, then clocks move slower. This is, this is a mirror one. No, we can't. This is mirror two, right? Uh -huh. This yeah. is... A light called photon, it moves the length L and it returns to length L. Now, can you write the equation for this one? Yeah, yeah. So, this is at rest. This right? is at rest, yes. So, if the length of the, of the, the height of the mirror is L, then the time is 2L over C. What is moving at the horizontal direction and what is moving at the vertical direction, Isaac? Wait, I mean, nothing is moving in the horizontal direction. The clock the is, is moving in the vertical direction. Clock, clock is moving at the horizontal direction. Which clock? You, we weren't told that. Oh, the mirror clock? The yes. light clock? Yes. Okay. And F, what is moving at the vertical direction? Uh, the photon. The photon. Copycat. Okay. So, light. Okay. Okay, great. Sorry, man. I promise so, I won't do it again. So, now, um, this is at rest. Now, let's see mm -hmm. how they act differently, behave differently when this is in motion. So, motion. Yeah. A truck moving and you throw an apple onto it uh, vertically, it's going to be vertical in your reference frame, but to an observer's reference frame, it's going to move with both the horizontal velocity of the truck and the vertical velocity you okay. threw it up. So, so that draw is the same way, if you, then, yeah, if you move the light clock, then hypothetically, the time to move should stay the same, yeah. even though there's more distance to cover. And the only way to fix that is two ways. Either light's velocity is greater than C, since it covers a larger distance in the same amount of time, which is obviously not possible, or time and space completely bend to make sure that light speed is exactly C. And somehow, it's the second case that works in reality. Okay, great. Um, Raf has a wonderful um, triangle over there as well. So this is from Isaac's point of view. Isaac is an observer. Can you draw, an, can you draw Isaac outside, Raf? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Isaac C. Please don't draw me as an idiot. Yeah, Isaac C. The photon, the f Isaac C. The photon moving at diagonal line because the clock is on a track and the track is moving. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there is a photon in the clock, and the photon is doing tick tock, tick tock. Now, can you write the T? Yeah. So, and under well, okay, this here, t, this t is slower here, than delta t. t was too. Okay, so too well, yeah. here's the thing: thing. this t, v delta this t is I said, I said, over one t. mic at a time. Now, Isaac, Isaac, one mic at a time. Raf, do the t. Isaac, Isaac, let's watch, and you're gonna do the other one. Call it out, okay. Raf. Call it out. Yes. Okay, so this. Horizontal distance is V delta T prime. I called it prime because no, we're gonna it's call different. it. It's different. Hold on, 
we're going to call it in is it we're going to call it d d is equal to vt vt over two we're going yeah. to d is equal to vt over two oh, i don't like t why don't we use delta t oh like like this yeah because it's half v delta yes. t. okay so originally you used delta t and to refer to the full reflection time in the first one so just so you write, use delta t prime to refer to the full reflection time so just write vt over two uh, mm -hmm. so that would be less confusing right okay um, just write v delta t prime over two no there is a reason okay. i mean this is good there is a reason i'm i'm or, uh, there is a reason i'm removing delta t we don't need delta t okay. so v, vt over two but this t is different from this t of course right of course so i should put t prime yeah sure but we're gonna make everything same right. so big d big d replace big d by velocity okay so c okay. delta t, uh c t prime over two yeah yeah that's the other thing that should be c delta t prime over or c t prime over two which is what allows us to derive the equation all right, now go ahead. Do yeah. it on the top. Yeah. No, no, no. Do do it now. A square plus B square equals C square. Go ahead. Okay. Should do I do it or sh or should I? No, no. You do it. Uh, I already did it. Okay. No, I want you to do it very nicely. People want to see. It. This is not for undergraduate student. This is for, this is for like second grade student. I don't think second grade students know what the Pythagorean theorem is, man. Okay, go ahead. Okay. A is L so, square. Okay. And B is, Isaac, help us. B is VT. That's a good question. VT over 2 squared. Okay. And C is CT over 2 squared. Okay. So now write C squared T squared over 4. No, there is an easier way around it. No, not easier. We are not looking for easier. We are trying to see uh, whether we, you know, our physics professor failed our student. That's why we don't have, we have problem. Okay, let's multiply everything by four. Well, the big problem is that if you can't do basic algebraic manipulation, you're going to fail anyway, so. Okay, go okay. ahead. Or, else, or maybe I'm being too cynical, who knows. Uh, n n yeah, not everybody born with the same brain, but uh, not. Uh, that's why we have teacher. Otherwise, we need no teacher. Okay, Ref. Well, yeah, but the problem is, if you're not born with the brain to at least do algebraic manipulations, you shouldn't be doing something. No. So far, so good. All right. Now, right. T squared is equal to. T squared is equal to four L squared over C squared minus B squared. Okay. Is square is square on both sides. Okay. And um t take it to on the other side of the board. So okay. t t is equal to two L over can you see oh, oh, other one, other one. Yes. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Okay. You can go farther in fact, a lot farther. T is equal to two okay. L over square root of C square V square. Now remember 2L over C, right? What is 2L over C? T. Very good. 2L over C was the original time. So we're gonna keep that in mind. So now So now factor out C from the denominator. Yeah, now Okay. Remember, factor out C from the denominator. C. Good. Finish, finish, yeah. finish it. Okay. So 2L over C is T. Okay, now write yep. the final final okay. line. There it is. Okay, so T prime is equal to T over one over square root of V squared minus C squared. So this is time dial. Minus C squared. Wow. Isaac, what level? Well, um, it's basic algebra, maybe a little bit of geometry. Second, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. I'm gonna say eighth grade. Eighth grade, eighth grade. So like anyone, so anyone who's like 13 or 14 could understand this method. Okay, so what is so difficult over here, Rev, and why we, where do we lost our physics student? Why they scale yeah. special relativity? Why they- Okay, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So I think one of the most difficult things with special relativity is knowing who is looking at what and who is comparing what. I think so we addressed. Saying, I think we addressed that issue yesterday. Did we not? No, this is different yeah. because here we are saying time slows down if someone is moving, but time slows down for who? And uh, yeah, that's the difficult part. Yeah, yeah. So, so for example, when we say that time slows down for the moving observer. Does it mean that the time is slowing down for them, or does it mean when they compare their clock to the stationary observer, their clock takes less time than the stationary observer? So that's what it means, but it takes a long time for students to understand what it means. Yeah, at the end of the down. day. And actually, yeah, at the so, end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I, I have another thing to say. A lot, this is a common misconception. A lot of students think when you move fast. Time doesn't slow down for you. People's perceptions of you look like your time is slowed down. But your own time is just as fast as it always was. Uh, so, yeah, that's... The, so who, okay. is, who is now going... Yeah, you're never going to notice a change in anything in your own reference frame. Okay. All you're going to notice is changes to everybody else. You, who is now going to become younger using time dilation? The guy who is in the spaceship that moving with the speed of light or the guy who is staying on the Earth? The guy on the spaceship. Not the speed of light. There's no way it's moving at the speed of light. Well, what I no, mean, the point guy H, on the spaceship. Yeah. I mean, point eight C. Uh huh. Because for the guy on the spaceship, time will tick less slowly, as we saw here, than for the guy on the on the Earth. Well, yeah. Here's the thing: your perception of your own time is not going to change. Your perception of how other people are perceiving time is going to change when you that's go fast. That's right. So you is that's the problem with relativity because we always think that time is going to slow down for us. It's not. Things are just going to slow down for everyone else. So if he leaves Earth with point eight C, right? We're going to do it tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then he come back, right? Oh, I love this problem. Yeah. And he gonna he gonna yeah the twin paradox. Yeah. Is so screwed up. This is like it, it one of my favorite real. problems. Yeah. Uh, what is about is screwing up about it? Uh, we're gonna save it for tomorrow, but you can give a sneak peek, Isaac. Yeah, because it totally breaks our perception mm -hmm. of what an absolute time is. Mm -hmm. It debunks absolute time in because, the simplest possible way. Because we have a Newtonian brain. Yeah. Yeah. We think everyone right. is operating on the same time as we are. No, I think the, the twin paradox is amazing because it shows you that not everyone sees time in the same way. There's no universal Yeah, time. that like that is so special relativity and general relativity have a big difference. Special relativity is uh, simple and it can the the math is simple. The ideas are difficult. And the math is as we said about eighth grade level, ninth grade level. But the ideas are very difficult to wrap your head around. Yeah, that's right. But general relativity yeah. is difficult. As you said, general relativity requires differential geometry because of one reason. Because gravity changes everything. In special relativity, we're talking about High the, uh, inertial reference inertial. frames. Yeah. We're talking about when things move fast. In general relativity, we talk yeah, about... But we're not considering any happy. acceleration while in GR we are. Actually, in special relativity, you can consider acceleration. This is a actually this is a famous misconception that special relativity cannot oh, handle so acceleration. Huh? What? What's the difference between SR and GR? There is no difference when you zoom in close enough. If you zoom in to a curve, what does it become? Well, a straight line. Yeah, just flat. Okay, that's the whole concept. Okay. It becomes so, flat, right? Yeah. It, but if you have 1905, Einstein did not have GR in in, in any way. So oh, is, so you're essentially saying GR no. reduces to SR in yeah. very specific cases. Yeah. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that locally, if you have a heavy uh, object, for example, the oh oh yeah, what you're saying now. Then when you zoom into space and time close enough, that's locally, bad. I think I get what you're saying. Well, let me ask you if this is what you're saying. So basically, in special relativity, 
you're working with just like a flat manifold, you're not taking gravity into account at all. But in general relativity, you now are dealing with gravity as its own object, and you have to start illustrating curves. But, but thankfully, locally, when you have a continuously differentiable curve like this, as long as you zoom in far enough, it's eventually approximable by a tangent plane or a tangent space. In fact, I remember learning about tangent spaces when doing a crash course of GR. So I think I see what you're saying now. When you zoom in enough to these manifolds, they become flat. And flat manifolds are what special relativity is all about. Yeah, there's actually, that's exactly right. And there's one equation that captures what you just said into physics. It's called, this is the equation. The covariant derivative of the metric is zero. I hate covariant and contravariant derivatives. So this is saying when you zoom in close enough to a curve and you take the derivative, it's zero. It's pretty it much like flat. flat, flat plane. Okay. Yeah, uh, oh, okay. the change in the metric tensor, which is essentially the curvature, is zero. Which Actually, no, nope, the change yeah. in the metric tensor is not the curvature. Yeah, it's not exactly the same okay. differential geometric constant. So, uh, Dad, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Okay, I don't know uh, anything about jet GR. Why are you pinning me to the board? No, okay. This is not a difficult question. It's just you might have to think about it a little bit. Yeah. We said that time slows Thanks. down. We said that time slows down if you On speed moving, up, right? moving clock. Yeah. A okay. moving clock ticks slower, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Because... So I even... Because... Thought, yeah. Because... Why? Because 2L not E... Is it smaller than yeah? What two L over T is it smaller than uh, um, C T over it's two? One two L over C is it smaller than? Um, we don't really that? need to write out the full thing. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. This is smaller than this. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we agree that uh, clock that's moving takes slower, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, a uh, clock that's moving even faster takes even slower, right? Okay. So, what about a clock that's moving almost at the speed of light? Oh no! Then it takes uh, it takes infinite well, almost at the speed of light. It takes infinite energy. Not possible. he said almost. Okay, he said then, almost. Let's say you have a clock that's moving at the speed of light. Let's say the clock doesn't have any mass. Okay, yeah, it's, it's gonna um, the car gonna go like the oh no mass okay, no mass. So, how much time will the clock tick if the clock is moving at the speed of light? Can you even have a concept of time at that speed? And not just that, won't it still have energy due to its momentum? Or do you want the no answer? Sucks? I don't think there's such a thing as time when you're moving that fast. Well, I mean, you have, uh, you can't, this is not literature class. We're not like defining what time is if you get to the speed of light. What, okay, how much fine. time would pass if you have a clock moving at the speed of light? I would say, I mean, just the heuristic guess is zero time. That's right. A clock moving at the speed of light takes zero time. So what does that mean now? That means for light, we say that if, if you have a beam of light, everything happens at the same time. So that means imagine you have a photon that, that comes to the earth from the sun. That photon experiences everything at the same time. It left the sun at the same time it arrived at the earth. Because for the photon, time doesn't tick. Yeah, there's no such thing as time for something moving that fast. It's kind uh, of crazy, right?